Well, it's hardly Assassin's bloody creed, is it? Friends and lovers, welcome to the Jimpressions for Dynasty Warriors 9, or as I like to call it, Dynasty Warriors 9. Spelt N-E-I-N, German for no. If you didn't get that joke already, here's another joke for you. Dynasty Warriors 9 really puts the hack in hack and slash. Now let me just say this, as a lifelong Dynasty Warriors fan, as a lifelong Dynasty Warriors defender, as someone who's played all the Dynasty Warriors games, and every single mainline game uh, I've loved, even the controversial Dynasty Warriors 6, I found something to love in it, and I played them for hours and hours on end. So let me just say this, Dynasty Warriors 9 can burn in fucking hell where it fucking belongs. So here it is, Dynasty Warriors 9, the massive open world sandbox experience that they've been crowing about. Yeah, let me tell you about an open world. As you can see from this, the giant open world translates to fucking nothing. Miles upon square miles of absolute oblivion. Interspersed with the occasional little skirmish. And we'll get more into the fights and combat system a little later. Here I am just beating uh, Zhang Fei, who is many levels above me, but it doesn't really matter. Nothing in this game actually matters. Uh, to be fair, this is of course a one-on-one -on -one fight with Zhang Fei on the bridge. In a normal Dynasty Warriors game, this would be part of an exciting battle. You'd get to the bridge bit of the map and fight him. Here, it's its own mission very far away from anything else. And that's how the open world works, if you were curious, in Dynasty Warriors 9. The open world basically just takes an average Dynasty Warriors battle that you'd see in any other game and just spreads it like, like the tiniest sliver of butter on a knife across the world's largest, flattest, blandest slice of bread. And that is the new gameplay, the new flavour that we've all got to look forward to with Dynasty Warriors 9. So here I am standing firm at Changban Bridge. That fight's over, it's on to the next fight. Uh, the, the idea of massive scale battles is gone. It's just gone. Uh, you have a little fight, then you ride for ages and ages and ages to the next fight. Or, once you've travelled around a bit, you just fast travel to the next fight. And fast travel to the next fight. Or sometimes, or often let's be honest, you'll fast travel to the nearest point to the next fight, which you'll then have to ride a long time to get to. And when you get to that fight, well, as you will find out, you'll wonder why you ever bloody bothered. The open world, I mean, I can safely say this is one of those cases where an open world has truly frucking, I tried to say frigging and fucking at the same time, I'm going to go with it, has truly frucking ruined a game. Dynasty Warriors 9 is bloody wrecked by this, because like I say, the idea of fighting your way to like the, the general, the main boss of any given stage, all of that's gone, it's over. Uh, all it is now is you're given the way to win a chapter straight away. You've got all these optional missions, you just saw me select one, that can make the final fight easier when you get there, but even then it's negligible, the difference that's made. But for the sake of playing along, here's Zhang He. You might not have recognised him, he doesn't have his claws. In fact, most of the iconic weapons are gone. We'll talk about that in a moment. Uh, but here we are. Uh, this is one of those epic battles that you can expect. Every character gets a grappling hook, so even walls don't mean anything anymore. You finally ride your way to the fight, they're heavily, uh, easily uh, signposted for you, the characters you've got to kill. You just grapple into the walls, kill them, fight over. And that is quite literally it. It's like sex with me. It is a long time waiting for nothing to happen, and then a very short, insignificant anti-climax. There we go, that's that mission done. That was easy, wasn't it? We grapple hooked in, and we grapple hook out. And in a moment, all of the other characters, there we go, their health bars turn white, which means they're going to run away. And uh, if you stick around long enough, they just disappear. They're just gone out of thin air once they start running. So you can't even stick around and fight stuff. They won't fight you back. It uh, doesn't really matter at all. Uh, but hey, 
at least when you do go in, you can get the doors open, that's something. So this is a whole epic fight that we're going through that in a regular Dynasty Warriors game would be condensed into a pretty action-packed stage and there'd be pathways and walkways, multiple routes, uh, uh, bases and gateways guarded by enemy officers. It'd be a really exciting thing. Uh, it's just not present in Dynasty Warriors 9. As I say, it's mostly horse riding, fast traveling, getting to a fight, uh, walking up to the heavily signposted main target, eliminating them, bish bash bosh, job done, you wonder why you ever bloody bothered. Uh, I'm ignoring picking up the ginseng, or however it is you say, I'm really not in the mood to Google things today. Um, but, oh, here we are, yeah, look, here's some resources, we can just uh, quietly trot along over them. Uh, you might be wondering about the copyright sign in the corner there. Uh, Tecmo Koei, for some reason, are proud of what they've done with this game, so they've slapped their copyright on there. Uh, the black border around this footage as well, I've not added that. Uh, on my TV, that black border was there. That was a lot of screen real estate that I just am not given in the game. It, it's, it, it's not full screen. It's not full screen, at least on my fucking TV, at least on my fucking PS4. So here we go, Lu Bei, uh, a big deal boss, right? Someone who you'd uh, really be expecting to have a, a, a long fight to, to get towards. Uh, oh, sorry, there was a, a siege weapon from outside just clipping through the door. Realistically, I never had to do that. I just did that for a laugh. This whole idea of sieges is, is, is a joke, an actual practical joke because you just grapple hook over the wall, walk over to Lu Bei, there he is, he's, he's, he's signposted, look, 70 odd uh, steps away, gonna, oh, there's a wall in the way, what are we gonna do? I'll probably grapple hook over that, let's do that, and there he is, and just in case you couldn't find him, the camera zoomed in on him, let's deal with him, and that'll be the end of the, well, the whole mission, the whole battle, the open world, Huge scale, exciting, action packed fight of Dynasty Warriors 9. I fucking hate this game. I mean, I, I am broken hearted. Speaking again as a big fan of Dynasty Warriors 9, that it's come to this. That it's come to fucking this. So anyway, those are the inherent pathetic flaws in the open world game design and how that's absolutely ravaged any idea of this being in, a, in any way similar to the excitement you could get in any other Warriors game. Let's talk about the revamped combat system, or as I like to call it, shit. The new combat system is basically four attacks. Every character now gets four attacks. Uh, one attack knocks enemies up in the air, one attack uh, stuns enemies, and one attack knocks them down. You engage in these attacks by holding a shoulder button and then holding one of the face buttons. Uh, attack four is a special attack that's on a bit of a recharge timer. Uh, they've clearly gotten that idea from RPGs where you can unleash these sort of attacks. Uh, the button mashing, the actual uh, uh, the closest facsimile to the hack and slash uh, you get with this is you can hit square for a very limited number of attacks. Uh, your strong attack is just like just one slash now. Uh, but the flow attacks, as they call them, that's where the hack and slashery comes in. Uh, what you do there is just mash square after you've done one of your four basic attacks. And in that regard, more than in any other Dynasty Warriors game, every single character feels like they're playing the same fucking way. Uh, the animations, of course, are different. And to be fair, even though most of the iconic weapons have been completely taken out of the game, uh, the, the animations are different, even with characters sharing the same weapons. So an issue of cloning isn't so much uh, the problem here. Uh, characters don't feel necessarily like clones, they just all feel bland, homogenized, and fucking dull to play with, no matter what weapons they've got. Nevertheless, the fact that all of the imaginative and interesting weapons are gone speaks volumes to just how dull, dreary, and unimaginative this entire fucking game is. I hate it, I don't know if you've 
notice that. It's actually comical exactly how many enemies have weapons on chains, either a hook or like a ball on a chain. Uh, so many of them. Uh, you know, it used to just be like Xia Zhu, uh, Gan Ning, uh, and even then, like they'd have different uh, attacks they could do with them. This time, so many. Uh, you remember in Dynasty Warriors 8 Extreme Legends uh, when Chen Gong was introduced and he had that awesome weapon that was like a command scroll? And so his attacks were him reading from the scroll and summoning other soldiers to do the uh, charge attacks for him. Yeah, he just fights with a, a weapon on a chain now. Remember Dong Zhuo's bombs? He'd throw those bombs around and it'd be a really fun, unique way of fighting. It, just a ball on a chain. Uh, Sao Ren with his shield, so that shield weapon he has. It, just a ball on a chain. Uh, hooks on chains. Hooks and balls on chains. Every time I see one now, I almost want to laugh, except I'm too busy crying. Uh, the swords, the claws, the throwing knives, doesn't really matter. Sorry, I said claws. Uh, you've got some fists, a whole bunch of enemies, uh, enemies, a whole bunch of playable characters have uh, fist weapons, uh, but it just doesn't matter. Uh, Zhang He's claws are gone. His voice actor is shit. Uh, all the voice actors are shit. Uh, they've ditched all of the union voice actors they had in previous games, and it's not even Dynasty Warriors 3 funny. Uh, they just found boring, bland people who just sound like some bloke. I mean, whoever it is who's doing Zhang He is trying to do it a little bit, Camp, but he's not even been given the script for it. Uh, everyone speaks sort of with utility. Uh, no real personality, um, save for a few. I'll admit that some characters like Yuan Shao are quite fun. Uh, in a camp over the top way, but for the most part they are like the rest of the game. Uh, Ill-advised, a bad idea, very boring, and annoying. And it's the first time, and maybe Tecmo Cubby's done this as a joke because I've complained about the lack of English localization with voices in some of their other games, because for a series that already gets accused of cutting corners and being lazy, uh, Tecmo Koei doesn't do any of its Warriors games any favours by not bothering to localise half the fucking games. Uh, and of course reusing lots and lots of assets so they can keep having expansions and spin-offs. Uh, which they will, I have no doubt, continue to do with this one. Um, we'll talk even more about that in a bit. Um, actually no, we'll talk about it right now. Um, First of all, uh, with regards to the lack of weaponry, uh, original varied, shall we say, weaponry, which uh, Tecmo Koei, or at least some defenders have come out and said, that's about realism. We want our game where one person can fight thousands and thousands of people to be realistic now. Um, first of all, that's horse shit, because we've still got characters fighting with Zhuge Liang's fan. Uh, oh yeah, Zhuge Dan. Do you remember in Dynasty Warriors 8 when he was given that, like, billy club? Uh, short rods, they called it as a weapon, and he had these really awesome grab attacks and he just fights with a fan now, again, like he did in another game before. Uh, why bother? Why bother having original inventive weapons? Uh, some will say it was for realism's purpose, but no. I don't think it is, and if I see Zhang He's claws, uh, Dong Zhuo's bombs, Chen Gong's command scroll, if uh, Sun Tzu's tonfas, if I start seeing those fucking weapons, sold as DLC, or reserved for an Extreme Legends expansion, hell will have no fury like a sterling scorned my friend. So anyway, the Battle of Hulao Gate. One of the most, I dare say, iconic fights in the Dynasty Warriors series. The one battle where you are told not to pursue Lu Bu, although in this case you've actually got to to progress. Um, I say you've got to, you've got to to at least do this part of the Battle of Hulao Gate. So, here we are, everything's exciting. Uh, Lu Bu's getting his, uh, I mean, why am I even giving you the sarcastic lead up. You know exactly where this is going, right? Because this is Dynasty Warriors 9, where there is no nuance, there is no map design. It's just a flat open fucking space where you walk right up to who you've got to kill and end them like that. Gone. Over. All of this build up, 
All of this, like this entire section I've had with Tao Tao fighting here. Oh, that's another thing. Uh, one character at one point called him Cow again, like in the old games and not Tao. Uh, there are various points at which the voice actors don't seem to agree uh, on how to pronounce things. Almost as if they were given very little, if any, fucking voice direction. Which I can believe. I can't. I, what, what I can't believe is that I'm actually wishing that there wasn't an English localization in a mainstay Dynasty Warriors game. I swear Tecmo Kobe has done that just to piss me off. Um, they obviously haven't. They were just being fucking cheap as usual. But uh, I'm leaving this cutscene running. I'm talking over it, of course, because it's really not worth hearing. In fact, unlike with any other game in the series, I was skipping cutscenes. I was so fucking bored by them. I mean, I was skipping lots of stuff. By the end of it, I was giving up doing any of the submissions. I was just racing just to see how fast we can get through it and how meaningless and shallow and vapid the open world farce, the open world illusion, fabrication is. Uh, I just started going to the last bit, like, who have I got to kill to end the chapter? Let's just ride all the way over there and do it. Um, to its quote-unquote credit, uh, you know, we'll, we'll be as kind as possible, uh, there are some moments, some, uh, where there's a little bit more to it, like you might be trapped in a building and have to fight your way out. Uh, the typical way they will try and force you to not just do what I'm doing here and end it really quickly is they might tie uh, another character's life to yours, so you've got to babysit them. Now, this was something you'd see in other Dynasty Warriors games as well, where, you know, the, the leader of your side of the fight, you'd have to protect them and make sure that the enemy doesn't reach them. Uh, here, uh, they've they've just committed fully to that. There is a mission where Dion Wei is supposed to be your bodyguard with you as Cao Cao, uh, but if he dies, uh, he will... Yeah, that's it, game over. Chapter over if you've uh, saved manually at the wrong point. Uh, which I did at one point because I actually completed the mission where Dion Wei was supposed to be kept alive, but I don't know if either the game forgot to tell me that that uh, was, you know, Dion Wei's mortality was still important, or if it had just forgotten to uh, stop flagging Dion Wei as a mission critical character. But I was allowed to travel half the way, you know, half the world away from Dion Wei. Uh, and complete another mission, and then he died. But the game had saved just seconds before he died, and that was it. I had to start the whole chapter again. That was certainly the point at which I thought, well, fuck it, I'm just gonna not bother with cutscenes and playing the game as it wants me to play it, because you're just punished for that. You're punished for trying to do submissions and go off the beaten path sometimes. But that's enough of that. Shall we have a look at hunting? I'm sure you're all very excited to get to that, but first let's just yeah, be disappointed by the fact that Diao Chan was scheduled for a fight, but because I fought Lu Bu, who was already in front of her, she just fucked off. She just fucked off and ran away. Fuck this game. But hey, it's all about the thrill of the hunt, so let's go get some tigers. I'll show off the hunting mechanics that you can enjoy in Dynasty Warriors 9. Uh, in order to pitifully, pathetically justify having an open world, Tecmo Kari has done the barest of bare minimum to throw in some random shite uh, that you can stumble across. You know, a mineral deposit here, a treasure chest there, and some animals. Some animals that you can fire at. There we go. We're hunting. Just like in Far Cry. Uh, you can see in several areas, like with uh, some of these um, crafting things and hunting things, where they've tried to copy stuff like Monster Hunter or indeed Far Cry. Um, there, wait a minute. There we go. The reticle's red, but we're hitting a tree, because why not? So anyway, uh, they have these mechanics that you find in other better games, but those games are already doing it all better. That's what's really puzzling about this. Uh, the open world must exist for pure cynicism, maybe some desperate bid to uh, appeal to the West. I know that was a, a big thing for uh, Japanese companies many, many years ago. 
they were homogenizing and ruining their games to make them quote unquote appeal to the West. It was basically their version of today's games as a service uh, that we have in the West here. Uh, and it just seems that uh, Dynasty Warriors is clinging on to that. The only problem is, Omega Force is good at one thing hack and slash. It's not good at hunting, it's not good at fishing mechanics, it's not good at crafting. Although I say that, other games that aren't open... Oh, oh there was a tiger that just disappeared. Uh, they will just disappear, uh, because why not? Uh, just having them run or do anything other than stand there gormlessly would be too much work. Too many resources. Because heaven forbid, this game must have cost millions and millions and billions and billions to make. Fuck it. Uh, anyway, we're going to talk about wolves in a moment. I've uh, been showing a little bit of this off. Uh, I showed a little bit of this off early, just because I couldn't get over how fucking ridiculous it was. Uh, but here are wolves, half of which are embedded in the mountain top, and none of which are doing anything. They're just stood there waiting to be shot. Uh, so that's good. Thumbs up there. Uh, the game has a lot of issues like this. Clipping issues being one one of them. Um, some attacks not connecting. Uh, every now and then you get these triangle prompts that pop up that let you perform a finishing move, uh, which is often why uh, enemies being leveled above you don't really mean anything. Uh, because once you whittle down their health enough, you will get a button to press that just insta-kills them. Although sometimes that just doesn't work. Uh, sometimes the prompt, despite coming up, won't work. Uh, enemies will go through into places where they don't belong, like we saw here. Um, sometimes you'll be fighting in a base that might be uh, near a, a like, a, I'm going to use the, the word base again, but I mean bases in encampment, but also a base that's at the base of a mountain. And halfway through a fight, you might look up to find that some of the enemies have uh, disappeared and ended up respawned atop the mountain. And you can't get to them, so you can't capture the base. That's awesome, isn't it? Uh, here we are uh, uh, really showing just how trivial uh, fighting in this game is now, where you can just fast travel to where you got to go once you've been around a bit. So we fast travel to Han Dung, uh, who is around here somewhere in this mess of bullshit. Uh, and I think what was wrong with this is it takes a while for missions to update. So here we go. It can take a while for missions to update because the game just fucking dawdles. So even once, you, once you've defeated an objective, well, I say completed an objective, defeated an enemy, um, it'll take ages for the next objective to pop up and show you where you got to go. So that's just something else you got to contend with. The game is full of problems. Glitches, bugs, just terrible design overall. The characters are, as I say, homogenized. Battles are completely meaningless. The wide open world is a waste of time, everybody's time, because it just means lots of riding around doing nothing in a world that has not the activities nor the design to justify it. Uh, submissions, full of those, but they fall into the common open world trap of just being utterly, utterly repetitive. Um, I mean, look at this character we're playing with now. She had uh, Sai, those daggers. Now she's just got rings, just like Sun Shang Xiang. Just like that. Because everything's got to be the same. All the characters are just sludge. Dynasty Warriors 9 is just sludge. Sludge, sludge, fucking sludge. And it deserves to be melted down as such. As pure molten slag and then flung down a racist's chimney. <laughs> I couldn't think of anything. I'm choking on my own outrage here. Look on the bright side though, Jim. At least it doesn't have loot boxes. I know that some people will have written those comments before they got this far, so let's just address that. No, no, this game doesn't have loot boxes as far as I can tell. But that doesn't stop it from being a very terrible game that I struggle to call a Dynasty Warriors game. Because it don't look like one, it don't feel like one, it don't play like one. It plays like a like a horrible parody of a Dynasty Warriors game. It's like when they did that overly simplistic Renbu system in Dynasty Warriors 6. It's like they took something that was already accused of being a dumbed down experience and made it dumber. Even more simple, even more mindless, even more pointless. 
I mean, there might as well just not be a combat system. Just let the game play its fucking self. You'd have a lot more fun with it. You could let it play itself, then go into another room and have a wank. And that would be a better night in than actually playing this piece of spunk. Give me a moment. Give me a moment to compose myself. Um, because even though there aren't loot boxes, I smell cynicism in the air. This game has what they call NPCs. Tecmo Koei are calling them non-playable characters. I'm not just referring to, like, you know, Cao Hong there. Um, characters that are just generics who aren't playable in the least. Uh, they actually have uh, original character models and weapons, but you can't unlock them. They're not playable in that sense, hence NPC. Um, for instance, one of them is Dong Zhuo's granddaughter. She's a character now. Uh, guess what weapon she's holding in cutscenes and in battle? It's a ball on a chain. Ooh! Isn't that fucking innovative? I... Oh, I can't believe... I just... Again, just give me a second. Give me a second to recompose myself. Just gotta get myself back into the mood to be able to talk about this game. Fuck this horse's ass of a piece of software! Alright, I think I'm good. Honestly, I think I've said all that I need to say for right now. Uh, I'm sure there are many other minor complaints I could come up with. The banality of the crafting system, the pointlessness of every... Well, I think I've hammered on that enough. Um, the whole game just makes me wonder why. Why did they do it? Why is it open world? It has done nothing to help the game. It has only harmed it. And it has harmed it in some of the absolute worst ways possible. Uh, it makes everything long and sluggish and drawn out. It's spread the battles really thinly. Um, I mean, it's made the idea of fighting against an army feel like window dressing. Utterly pointless. Um... Honestly, I'm, like, I'm at this point now where I'm at a loss for words. Uh, I kind of got all of the bile out at the beginning, and now I just don't know what, what there is left to say. It's not a Dynasty Warriors game at, at heart. I know it is technically and legally and everything else -ly a Dynasty Warriors game, um, but if this is what Dynasty Warriors is now, then the series is most definitely dead to me. Utterly dead to me. Um, enjoy Lian Shi there, fighting with yet more hoop weapons. Uh, she used to have a crossbow, but again, that was just a bit too inventive. Um, characters that did have bows in the last game as weapons, Zhu Ran, uh, Huang Zhong, Jie uh, Huan. Um, I'm, I'm kind of speedily going through the names, so sorry for the mispronunciations, but uh, they've just all got generic, dull, lifeless weapons because this is a generic dull, lifeless game, and I've gone to bat for the Warriors series so many times. There is a Jimquisition you can find on this very channel that defends Dynasty Warriors and talks about it, and uh, that was just a one example of the triangle prompt just being fucking useless. Um, very much like this game, this game is fucking useless. We're just riding a horse really slowly and boringly. Slide down over there, there we go. Now we're in the water. Quickest way in it is to just slowly swim over to the defensive formation. <sighs> Dynasty Warriors 9 is so far away from what a Warriors game should be, it's disgusting. And if you're someone who already hates Dynasty Warriors, that's not actually as good as it sounds, not by a long bloody shot. Because they kept in, or in many cases exacerbated, everything people hate about Dynasty Warriors while sucking out everything people like about it. They just doubled down on all the bad shit. And what did they replace it with? The most mundane, shallow, time-wasting excuse for a fake open world I've ever fucking seen. And I can tell you this much, it ain't worth a bloody trade-off to have this alleged open world instead of a fun hack-and-slash combat system and characters that feel unique. Fuck this game and the horse it tried to ride in on but couldn't because the horse kept walking into fucking walls. Well, if there's anything left to say about this particular game, 
Uh, I guess it will be saved for Monday because Monday is coming. Now, when I first saw what looked to be a clone fest, uh, Attack of the Clones as it were, when they started revealing characters and I saw what they did to Zhang He, who's usually my main, my favourite character. I mean, that's certainly the point where I gave up entirely, was when I unlocked Zhang He as a playable character, and I saw what they did to him, I was done. I just checked out. Uh, I have never played a Dynasty Warriors game before where I just didn't want to play it anymore, within moments of playing it. Uh, I'm normally addicted, but this one was just digital misery to play, and all I wanted to do was stick Warframe back on. But like I said, I was already getting fucked off when I saw how generic all the weapons were becoming. To finally get it in my hands, it's worse than I could have possibly, possibly imagined. Monday is coming, let's just say that. I was already getting ready to open fire on Tecmo Curry for years of them taking advantage of their fans with this series and the forgiveness that fans had had for it. I was already preparing to open fire on a Jimquisition, um, but it's worse than that. I thought clones were going to be the problem. I thought, well, you know, half the characters with these balls, of chain, balls and chains rather, uh, were going to all play exactly the same, uh, but it's so much worse than that. And on top of years of laziness on the part of Tecmo Kami, and I am going to call it laziness, laziness and thriftiness, uh, this is the final insult, the sweetest plum, the last of the curtains, the straw and the camel and the back and all of that shit. So next Jimquisition will be about Tecmo Kami, and they can enjoy that because, let's face it, after uh, me already giving away what I thought about this long before this video went up, and after everything I've said here, I don't think I'm ever going to get another review copy off them again. Uh, I do believe uh, that I will be blacklisted. Um, if not, then that's one thing that I will have to admire them for, is their ability to take what is and will continue to be an incredibly vicious pounding and pounding and pounding and pounding. Hashtag Monday is coming. Because there's so much more I've got to say about Tecmo Koei after this. After this kick in the fucking anus. Which is incidentally where Dynasty Warriors 9 belongs. In the bloody anus. We must bring sucker to the ravaged souls of the people and blow a new breeze through this rotten land.